What's up, guys? It's your boy, Big Guy Journey. Back with another episode of Fat, Broke, and Single. Episode 2. We've made it to 2. And I appreciate you (laughs) for tuning in. Nah, seriously, I do. I appreciate all the love, all of the comments, all of the great feedback that I've gotten so far. And we're just getting started. But look, today we're going to talk about broke. What exactly is broke? What does the broke and fat broke and single mean? Does broke mean that you're absolutely without money? Does it mean you have a little bit of cash? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> no, I'm going to tell you what I think. But I'm going to start with this kind of telling the story, right? So one of my mentors years ago, Kevin Mack, millionaire maker Kevin Mack. He said, you know, Tremaine, I know a guy who has over a hundred grand a year. But he also has a great big house, a couple different cars for him and his wife. And he has a few different habits. For him, he is broke. He's just broke on a higher level. And it made me think because I know someone who makes 50 grand a year, doesn't have all of those trappings of success, and he lives a good life, a peaceful life, and he doesn't feel that he's broke. So I said, look, most of the time we associate being broke or, or, or not even being broke. We associate success with the trappings, the things you see. And a lot of times you don't even know that the very people that you idolize are depressed. They're down and out. They're broke. They have nothing. Because all of the money that they do make, the income that they do have coming in, is going to keep up a look for you and for me. Now, I personally have never idolized people who had wealth. I respect the man with wealth because, hey, he did something that I didn't. He he did something that I wasn't able to do, so I respect him. I respect his hustle. I respect his grind. So I've always looked at being broke is not just something that means that you don't have any money in your pocket. More like broken. Someone who doesn't have the desire. Who doesn't have the will to go out and get it. Because as I said in my last video, it only takes a second, a decision, a thought. And you can change everything. So I don't measure brokenness by what's in a man's pockets. Brokenness, broke, is a mindset. It's a mindset. How does this go with broke, fat, single, fat, single, broke, fat, broke, single? Either way you want to put it. There's no specific order. But I tell you this. A lot of times what you see is people who've gotten fat, gotten super overweight, they've given up. They don't have the desire to go forward. They don't have the will. They don't have the the, 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 that burning desire because they've given up. They've given themselves over to food. They've given themselves over to their habits. It's no different. Than someone giving themselves over to alcohol. It's no different than someone giving themselves over to crack. Because food is an addiction. And no, it's not like this all the time. But I will say this. When you see a person that, 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 that suffered from that. When you see them make the decision and turn their life around. You see that success in other areas often follow. 
a man that's 400 pounds loses 200 pounds. He all of a sudden has this desire to go out and write a book. He has this desire to go out and start a trucking company. He has this desire to go out and get it. He wants to do more. He has this desire to approach the woman that he would desire that he's always been wanting. Because his insecurities doesn't hold him back anymore. And again, it's not always like this because there's a lot of fat brothers out here getting it. <laughs> and I can say this for myself because I've always been a big guy. I was a I was a I was a big kid. I was a big teenager. I was big in my 20s. And I was still getting it. I had the desire. I had a burning desire to go out there and get it no matter what. My mama taught me early on as a hustler. First thing that she did is gave us a candy store in our house center projects. We set up shop. Knock, knock, knock. Can I get an icy? That's what the kids used to say. I say 25 cents. Time after time after time. We learned inventory. We learned customer service. We learned all of that. And early and, and, and later on in life, that turned over to me out in the street selling drugs. I'm not all proud of everything that I've done in my life, but I wasn't always broke. I wasn't always broken. But something happened. And this is what I'm going to tell you about here. In my mid-20s, after hanging out one night, I had this, this something telling me I needed to go to church. And I argued with myself back and forth, but guess what? I got up and I went. Now, I wasn't raised in no church. I wasn't raised religious or none of this. But something was prompting this. I had went a couple times with my aunt and with a friend, but nothing major. So I went, and that day... There was a woman on stage preaching and it absolutely changed my life. I had a paradigm shift and because I'm one of those extreme people, everything that I do when I hear something, if I hear something that's truth that resonates with me, I'm all in. So I became all in. When I say all in for the first couple years, I stopped watching TV. I stopped listening to music. I stopped associating with people. All in. But there's something else that happened. Because this woman that was in front of the room preaching every week. I want God. I want God. I don't want nothing else. So heavily against worldly success and worldly trappings. That paired with me reading the scriptures. I missed something. I missed the fact that she was a woman and she could afford to forsake everything. And I say that in a good way, in a bad way at the same time, because forsaking everything is something that one who aligns himself with scripture should do. But everything got to be in context. And because I saw that, I lost my desire to Excel in business and finances. I lost my desire to build completely. Completely. It was like I lost probably 10 or more years of my life. And I and I don't regret it. I don't regret it. But I found myself broken. Because as a woman, she could afford to do that because she had a husband that was out working, that was out building. For the family. And here it is. I'm not building. Here I am not seeking a wife. Here I am not doing anything. That the scripture actually really tells me to do. I'm not going to say anything. Because I was doing a lot of things. That the scripture told us to do. But as as far as me. Being a lender. Instead of the brawler. No I was not. I was going to work. I was working at a juvenile facility and I felt like my purpose was being met because I was touching young young guys in a way that made them see, make them be able to see a positive male role model and stuff like that. 
But when it came to the time where a young man is supposed to be creating so that he could enjoy the fruits of his labors in his 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s, I was not. And so that's where my brokenness came in at. I was broken. So when I say fat, I started off fat. (laughs) There was no difference there. But I was fat as a hustler. But then here it is, I come and I become broken. No desire. No push. I gave up everything. I can say I did it for Yah, but there's nothing in scripture that tells me that I have to be destitute. There's nothing that tells me that I have to be broke. There's nothing, nothing tells me that I have to lose my desire to create. In fact, it's the opposite. And I say all that because you may be in a place of brokenness and no matter how you got there, you can come out. I was lucky. No, I won't say lucky because I don't believe in luck. I was... What are the words that I can use? I was blessed enough to realize that what I was doing was not what I should be. And so I turned it around. And if I can turn it around, you can turn it around. If you can turn it around, the next man can turn it around. It's all a decision. One decision away. There's that decision again. Decide. Remember what we talked about in pod episode one. Decide. That's all it took was a decision. I woke up. I was fortunate enough to wake up and see that I have work to do. And you can too. But look. Next week, I'm going to bring on one of my good friends, the Intentional Millionaires. Because I don't want to give in going to the hows and stuff right here in this episode. I just want to kind of give you an explanation. But next week, I'm having my friend, the Intentional Millionaire on. This gentleman is 42 and already got a million dollar portfolio. And you know what? He's going to show us how he did it. Because if you don't have a plan... No matter how much money you make, if you don't have a plan to be financially free, if you don't have a plan to be wealthy, if you don't have a plan to be successful, you're pretty much just turning your wheels. My mother used to say, I live day by day. That means that whatever happens today happens today and we'll just live for tomorrow. Tomorrow will be tomorrow. But hey, you should plan. You should have a plan of action in place. And this is what he's going to teach us. So. I'm excited for you. In fact, I'm excited for me too. But look, this is another episode of Fat, Broke, and Single. Tune in again. Give me some feedback. Let us know how you feel. All right. Take care. Take charge. And God bless.